Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're talking high pressure fuel systems. Every year Volkswagen does a competition for its dealership employees. This is called the Retail Qualification Championship, or as I'm going to refer to it, RQC. The RQC is basically a series of challenges or tests or tasks for each department. So as a technician, we had round one, which was simply just a test. Round two was a timed test. Round three was a test where you had to basically diagnose different problems with a car using a wiring diagram or DSO readings, as well as creating a video. Well, this year I actually made it into round three. So I took the test reading uh, waveforms from a DSO and reading wiring diagrams and creating a video. Now, I'll be honest, I felt like I had a little bit of an advantage because let's face it, I create a lot of videos. So what I wanna share with you guys today is my submission to Volkswagen for the round three video. It's edited slightly from the original version just because I pulled out some information that you guys really don't need. It was kind of mandatory stuff for that video. Now, this may not be a champion level video, but it was one that I wanted to have a little bit of fun with as well as get the information about direct injection fuel out there. So it was a way for me to kind of be fun and creative and tell a little bit of corny jokes in the video and again, have some fun with it. So with that, here is my submission for round three for the Volkswagen Retail Qualification Championship. Greetings viewers and welcome. Today, we're talking direct injection fuel systems. What is direct injection fuel? How do you define direct injection fuel? Well, if we're talking about what powers our car, it's simply that we're injecting fuel straight into the cylinder. In previous generations of fuel injection, we were injecting fuel into the intake manifold and the fuel was carried in with the air on the intake stroke. With direct injection, we're going straight into the cylinder. This will allow us to more closely monitor fuel, get more complete combustion, cooler engine temperatures, as well as better efficiency overall. The process of direct injection starts with the heart of our computer system, our ECM. When we open our driver's door or turn the key on to start our car, the ECM sends a pulse width modulated signal to the fuel pump control module. The fuel pump control module is the workhorse for the low pressure side fuel system. This way we pull the hard work from the ECM into a separate module. The J538 will send the signal to the low pressure fuel pump. The low pressure pump lives inside the fuel tank. In addition to housing fuel and our low pressure pump, this composite tank is built to absorb impacts as well as to be able to expand and contract for changes in temperature. When our low pressure pump is commanded on, it provides pressure as well as volume to the high pressure fuel pump. It has a working range of about four to seven bar on an output test, but running fuel pressure may actually be different. This is why it's very important to follow the repair manual when diagnosing low pressure fuel system problems. Some of these pumps have a regulator and filter built into them while others like the GTI have a separate fuel filter with a regulator built into that. As our low pressure fuel leaves the pump, it makes its way to the high pressure fuel pump. This Bosch pump is a demand controlled pump driven by four lobes on the end of the intake cam. Four lobes allows for reduced piston stroke. This results in reduced pressure fluctuations and because there's only one stroke per injection, the metering precision of the injectors is improved. The high pressure pump can produce as much as 150 bar when requested by the ECM. It also has its own pressure limiting valve that opens at a about 200 bar. Pressure and quantity are regulated by N276, the fuel pressure regulator valve. This valve is mounted onto the high pressure fuel pump and with signal from the ECM, tells the high pressure pump when and how much fuel to send to the rail. The ECM uses a signal from G247 to measure how much fuel pressure is in the rail. G247 is mounted into the rail and can measure up to 200 bar. Proper reading of fuel pressure is vital to engine performance and that's really great because us technicians can see what our high pressure fuel is reading. Once high pressure fuel is created by the pump, it's sent into the fuel rail. Our fuel rail houses the injectors as well as G247. Integrity of the fuel rail is very important because it must be able to withstand over 150 bar of fuel pressure. A drop in high pressure fuel after the key shut off can point to a bad retention valve inside the high pressure fuel pump or a leaking fuel injector. Now that our rail is fully pressurized with high pressure fuel, it's time to inject the fuel directly into the cylinder. This is done by our piezo crystal fuel injectors. Each injector is ground controlled by the ECM. They have six very tiny openings for fuel to come out of and spray at a 50 degree angle. This angle is meant to reduce particulate formation 
oil thinning, as well as reduce hydrocarbon emissions. And of course, this is all reported back to our Bosch Motronic 17.5 ECM, which is responsible for the pulse width modulation to the fuel pump control module, interpreting G247 controlling N276, as well as providing ground to the fuel injectors. And most importantly, from a technician standpoint, it allows us to look at all that stuff. So there you have it, three and a half minutes of me talking even faster, I think, than I normally do. Like I said, it was a video that I, I really used to kind of learn some new editing techniques, as well as just plain old have a good time with it. So, hey, if you guys like this video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. All right, guys, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And hey, only the top 12 in each department make it through to the next round. So if I make it through, that means I get to go to Fort Lauderdale and uh, compete against the other top 11 technicians in the U.S.